last year I was not successful. So last year around Christmas time, it got like zero degrees and didn't go above freezing for a whole week and pretty much everything died. But using these methods that I'm about to show you, I was able to be back at the farmer's market selling crops within about a month because I was using these methods. So stay tuned and I'm gonna show you exactly how I grow food all winter long. So tip number one is start seeds indoors using grow lights. Now these grow lights, I have specific grow lights that I use that I bought from Amazon and I'll leave the link down below so that you can click on that link and see the exact grow lights that I'm using along with the shelving system that you see here. Um, so if you do want to purchase it and you purchase it through those links, it actually helps support the channel. So I'm greatly appreciative of anybody who chooses to purchase items that way. I also have this indoor grow tent where I'm gonna start all my peppers in there. So I've got like really nice peppers to go outdoors into the garden in the summer. And we'll go into that in another video. I'll show you all about the grow tent and everything. But you don't have to buy the grow light that I have. All you need is a T5 light bulb. So you can just go online, Google T5 light bulb. They're generally like the shop lights that you see, uh, like installed in ceilings and things like that. You can actually grow plants under them. And the types of plants we're growing, to start seedlings they're going to be very sufficient you don't need anything more sophisticated than a simple t5 light so i start my seedlings in my basement i've got a nice little table set up and everything stored right there for my soil um, we'll go over how to start seeds in a different video but for all intents and purposes assuming that you know how to start seedlings um, you would start your seedlings in the trays the same way i use the paper pot quick click seed dropper so you want to grow the seedlings as big as you can inside to give you the best head start possible so you can really achieve this by using like 72 cell trays if you're hand transplanting and you can grow things pretty big inside and hand transplant them outside i'm going to show you how i use a paper pot transplanter system so it just goes a lot faster so i can plant a whole bed of spinach and lettuce here in just minutes really maybe 20 or 30 minutes sometimes. So tip number two is to make sure you harden off your plants before you plant them out. So you can't just take plants from the grow lights and then bring them outside and plant them into your garden. They'll just die no matter whether it's warm, cold, uh, or anything, because you need to adjust them to the atmosphere that you're about to put them in. So we're gonna want these plants to survive freezing cold temperatures. To do that, once you have your seedlings pretty big, uh, as big as you want them to go out, you're gonna wanna bring them outside so they can adjust to like the sunlight and the wind and the atmosphere. You're gonna wanna expose them to some type of cold temperatures, but you don't wanna let them freeze. So you can do this by kind of bringing them outside during the day, and then if it's gonna be really cold at night, put them somewhere like in your garage. For me, it's my greenhouse, but maybe you don't have a greenhouse. Uh, when I was getting started, I didn't have a greenhouse, but I had a grow light. So I was starting seedlings and in, inside under grow lights, and then I'd harden them off like this. Uh, I have like a back deck, so I'd put them under the back deck, and that way they don't get the frost on them, but then you can bring them back out during the day, and that's gonna help harden them off. Because otherwise, if they don't have this type of acclimation when they're in the field and it gets cold, then, they're just gonna die and they're not gonna survive. So for me, when I bring them out to harden them off, I just put them in my nursery with like the sides rolled up and then they get plenty of wind in there and I never have any issues hardening them off with that method. So, so if you do have like a nursery space and a high tunnel, uh, it's a perfectly acceptable method to harden things off. For me, it is at least. I've heard of people saying that you need to like take the crops out of your nursery and harden them off before you transplant them, but I never do that and I've never lost crops from this. So. I'll show you what it looks like so you can see what I'm talking about, but um, that method works perfectly for hardening plants off. I don't need anything more than that, but I let them sit there for about a week. So you wanna let your plants harden off for a week before you even think about transplanting them out. And then once you have your hardened off plants ready, you almost just wanna sit and wait. Because my third tip is to transplant outside when you have a really warm spell. So 
today is the end of November. Tomorrow's gonna be December 1st. So to, for all intents and purposes, it's the middle of winter. Um, or at least the beginning of winter. It's cold, you know, so um, it was 20 degrees two nights ago and I had the whole garden covered in Agrabon, but everything looks great as you can see. Um, the only thing I've really noticed is some damage on the turnips where they weren't above the ground and so I should have given those a double layer of protection probably. But now that I've made it through that cold snap, the forecast, we don't have any freezing temperatures that I can see for three weeks. Um, and that can always change, but it's, uh, it's what I can work with, you know. And then it's also supposed to rain the next couple of days. So I basically got through this cold snap. When it was 20 degrees, I brought all the plants in, put them under the grow lights, and then now I'm bringing them back out. And they're already hardened off. They're perfect, ready to go. They don't need anything more than what they've already had. They've been sitting out here for weeks. And so today's the day that we need to get them in. So to transplant them, I use the paper pot transplanter system, and this allows me to transplant multiple beds in no time at all really minutes as opposed to hours of hand transplanting and i totally get it that not everybody has a paper pot transplanter and if that's your situation just hand transplanting the regular way i did it for years before i bought the paper pot transplanter so whatever your typical method is for popping cells out or whatever method you're using maybe soil blocks or is perfectly fine you don't have to use a paper pot transplanter to be successful and then my fourth tip to grow all winter long is to cover your crops. So today I'm gonna to transplant spinach and lettuce. They're the most cold hardy crops and it's what I make most of my money off in the middle of winter. And so I've got three high tunnels and I'm about to build a fourth one. It's back there on the ground right now. So that's one way that I can cover crops, right? Plant them in my hoop houses and then they stay covered. And if it gets really cold, I'll put hoops inside the hoop house and cover them inside the hoop house. And with those methods, I've made it through really cold nights down below 20 degrees um, and it works great but outside the greenhouses you can see I've still got a ton of crops and we've made it through 20 degree nights I think it was 19 a couple nights ago so just with this it's Agrabon 50 which is a material that they use just to cover crops when it's cold out and I'll leave a link in the description for that also um, so if you want to buy yourself some Ag 50 you can grab that through the links in the description I have 26 foot wide pieces of Agrabon that I can use to cover six or seven beds at a time in my garden. So I pull the Agrabon over the crops that you see right behind me. And it's mostly lettuce, carrots, beets, and broccoli. And all the crops look perfect down to 19. Now if it gets colder than that, you should put a double layer on it. So if you've got more pieces of Agrabon, then you can pull two or three layers of Agrabon over it, and that's gonna make your chances of survival um, go up two or three fold. So tip number five is get multiple harvests off each planting. Meaning when I harvest the lettuce I come back and I clean up around the head and then it grows from the inside out and I can generally get second, third, and sometimes fourth cuts off it. And I do the same thing with the spinach and I'll show you here where I've done it before. I use the quick cut greens harvester to harvest it and then I take my marketable product and I put that into the walk-in. And then I come back with the quick cut greens harvester and I mow it down. So what's in the bag is gonna be trash. I throw it in the compost. It's just to mow it. So there's only this much left sticking out of the ground. And then I rake any debris out of the way. And it took me a long time to get the balls to actually do that because I was always scared that I was gonna damage the crop. But the truth is these methods are absolutely necessary to get multiple harvests. So. I've got a crop of lettuce right here that I've already gotten a harvest off of. So it's the second growth. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like and how I clean it up. Because if you don't clean it up, then all that material is gonna harbor pests and disease. So you want air as much airflow as possible around the plant. That's gonna give the pests nowhere to hide. And then it's gonna give uh, less optimal conditions for diseases to thrive. 
So you can see here how I've uh, how I've come through and I cleaned out all the outer leaves after I cut it the first time and I just leave that little bit in the middle because it's gonna grow from here out. So you can see how small that is compared to my hand. So I've harvested this already and then after I harvest it using a knife, I come back through and I clean all these little leaves out from under here and then just leave this for new growth. So then your plant's not wasting any energy to, to try to save these leaves that are dying. And then also when I'm removing this, this is all the older growth. So, so that's where all the pests and disease are anyway. So I'm removing that, taking it to the compost. And when I do that, I'm removing all the pests. So it makes it so you don't have to use pesticides. And so you can see here, these two beds, I've already gotten one cut off. So they're growing back and I'm gonna get a second cut off of them. And so this spinach right here, I've already cut this four times. So I'm letting it grow for a fifth time. And I just mow it down with the greens harvester and then rake any debris out of there. And then it just grows back from like inside the stem. See, I mean, these leaves are just brand new leaves growing up. So probably like one to two more weeks, I'm gonna get a fifth cut off this, meaning I've harvested it five times and sold it all. Um, increasing my profit margins fivefold. So now this bed of lettuce, I just harvested yesterday and I haven't cleaned it up yet. So this is what it looks like after I harvest. So this is what I'm talking about when I come through and I clean out all these outer leaves and it's gonna regrow from the middle. And this is very important because if you don't do this, this is where all the, you, you're just, it's gonna be filled with bugs. It's gonna get slimy. But if you take, remove all this plant matter and take it to the compost, it's gonna encourage new growth and you're gonna remove all the pests and disease that may be in there. That might not be true, but. But I found that if I don't do this, then I'm definitely not getting second and third cuts. It just does not come out good. So you have to clean it just down to something like that. You see how small it is? And then it'll just grow back from the middle. And so yeah, with the lettuce, I'll get sometimes, I guess three cuts. I've gone for four and the quality goes down on the fourth cut. So, um, but I'll push, I push, I've been pushing the limits on that for sure. So using these methods, I'm able to grow food all winter long and make a living growing vegetables in my suburban backyard. And I sell them to about five restaurants and one farmer's market every week. And I'm generally able to produce a minimum of $1,000 worth of revenue every week, all winter long. There are some breaks. There's like a month break. So that really helps for me to like harvest stuff and get it replanted. Um, you know, so I can have more stuff in like a month. Um, but other than that, I grow food all winter long for a living using these methods. But for now, let's go check out how we use a paper pot transplant. So I'm in my nursery here. And just to kind of show you like this, is a, these are the benches that I was talking about. Uh, so usually I have all these lined up with seedlings, uh, with seed trays. And then you can see how like I just roll up the sides right there and that's just like plenty to harden everything off. So I moved everything inside under the grow lights last night. Um, so I'm just gonna, so I've just brought them back out here to water them before I transplant them in, but they're all hardened off. Um, so I just bring them out with my cart and then and then I just bottom water them um, before I transplant them. So this is just like a food service tray um, that I get at K Tom restaurant supply. And it's just a typical 18 by 26 inch food tray that you put in an oven to cook like, 
uh, cookies, cookie sheet on, you know, a commercial cookie sheet. Um, so these fit the paper pot trays like perfectly. It's the best thing I've found to bottom water them and they're about one inch deep. And so I just put my paper pot tray in there and then I just fill it up with water. And then these paper pot trays soak up the water like crazy. So it's starting to get really late in the day. Uh, I just kind of on a whim decided that I was gonna make this YouTube video. And uh, I pretty much, I just gotta get going at this point and get this planted. So I'll leave the camera on just so you can kind of get an introduction to the tool. And we'll go over it in more detail another time. Um, I'll do whole videos about the paper pot transplanter system someday, but right now I just got to get these crops in the ground because it's the end of the day and it's getting dark and it's going to get cold. Uh, so I just got to get going. And I just, uh, I keep landscape pins right here in the paper pot transplanter. So I just poke that into the first uh, transplant and that's what holds it in place. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention and I was loading up a spinach tray, but I really need to plant lettuce in this bit because where I'm gonna plant spinach, I just pulled lettuce out of there. So for crop rotation purposes, I didn't wanna put lettuce right back in the bed that had lettuce because there was already like aphid pressure and I really find that the aphids only, like they go for my lettuce. They, if I transplant like arugula or spinach after the lettuce, they don't have aphids, but the aphids get in my lettuce. So that's why I just am sure to have proper crop rotation and not really proper, but you know, just not plant lettuce right after the lettuce. If possible. Okay, so I'll just show you guys how this works real quick. So I stick that pin down in there, and then there's just a furrow that digs a hole. Uh, so you can see, uh, sometimes at the end it has a little bit of trouble, and I'm just burying these paper chains real quick, uh, just at the end of the row, because it got rocky or something. So the paper pot, it's not a perfect tool, but you can see, I mean, I just planted two full rows and I got one row left here in uh, just minutes. I mean, the whole video right now is nine minutes. So, I mean, it probably has only been recording me doing this. I mean, I had to walk all the way over there and get my other tray, you know what I mean? So it probably took me like four minutes to, to plant two rows of this bed. So I gotta plant one more row that I'm gonna do right now. This will probably take me another oh, two minutes so to uh, plant a whole bed of lettuce using the paper pot transplanter uh, today is gonna take about a total, we can call it 10 minutes, right? I mean, we'll call it 10 minutes to be fair, but. Super fast. All right, y'all. So I got the bed transplanted using my paper pot transplanter. And however you transplant your seedlings doesn't matter. But this next step is crucial. And do not overlook it and trust me. You want to make sure you actually install the hoops now. Because if you don't, when you actually need to do it, it's going to suck. It's going to be freezing cold or pouring rain. Like that's the whole point is when you have a warm spell, 
do everything you can to set yourself up for success when it does get cold. So I'm gonna go and install my hoops right now. I'll show you, I'll leave the camera running. Um, you know, even though it's warm out, I'm not gonna wait till it's gonna be cold because you're just setting your up, yourself up for failure if you do that. So you wanna make sure to set yourself up for success because every time I don't install the hoops right after I transplant the crops, then it becomes drudgery when I have to do it because I'm in a rush, because it's about to get cold. Everything's gonna die if I don't do it, right? So I wanna be super efficient at that time and install the hoops now when it's warm out. So these hoops are just made out of three quarter inch electrical conduit that I bent using a hoop bender. So I'll leave a link to one of my other YouTube videos where I show you how I install Agrabon using a pool cover roller. And in that video, I teach you how I actually bend these hoops, but it's three quarter inch electrical conduit that I just bend to a size that is able to go over two of my bits. All right, my friends, well, I got the spinach planted and I hope you got something out of my five tips to grow greens all winter without a greenhouse. And I hope you'll subscribe to the channel and come back if you're into this type of content and learning how I grew my gardening hobby into a full-time living.